Hello and welcome back to Teach Talk with the Fine Arts. My name is Sarah and I'm your host. So today's episode, it's going to be the first of two parts and my guest is Maddie Jones. She's a music major with me. We went to the school together. She works in hospitality now. She talks about like auditioning for a cruise ship and her trip to like Austria and the Sound of Music set. We talk about teaching and the state that it's in because of the state of the world and it's a jam-packed episode. I will say it is pretty, (laughs) we kind of jump around a lot, but that's okay. I still think you guys are enjoy it. So here's part one of Maddie Jones. You know, I spend like all day on Zoom and I'm like, where's the, I'm sure, I'm sure you have to, because I'm sure you're on there quite a bit for like your schoolwork, right? You're on Zoom a lot for like all my classes are on Zoom. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I'm sure you have the uh, Zoom attire where it's just like sweatpants on the bottom dress attire on the top please tell me you do (laughs) well i wear jeans but if i were completely from home i would definitely do the sweatpants but oh good lord i would be like oh fancy you know from the you know all the top and everything but if you pan down it's just nothing but like grungy sweatpants with like stains on it (laughs) that's totally what i would do (laughs) oh my gosh I, I wish we were, like, completely remote, honestly. Like, they have the choice, but it's just, like, why are you here? Like, you could do the same thing from your house in your pajamas, but you come here to wear a mask all day. Like, why are yeah. you here? Yeah. Well, I mean, my God, you can get all of your college degrees and everything online. Why yeah, I not? Think I think I want to get my master's online. Like, because, like, Jeez. why not? <laughs> lovely just like really still with still with music or just regular like education? probably social studies really oh so you're gonna kind of get out of the music gig then yeah like i want to do music but i don't like teaching it really you know yeah. i'd say for for me i was just like i didn't i didn't think i ever wanted to teach at all and then it was mm-hmm. after i graduated that i was doing a lot of substitute teaching in yeah. music and I did that for two years straight. I was basically like a glorified assistant band director at my old high school for two mm-hmm. years. Um, not paid. But, hey, what do you got to do? And that's when I was like, oh, wow, I really actually kind of like teaching because I was actually doing really well at it. Because the band director was calling me like, hey, uh, I'm not going to be here. Can you substitute? So it was literally for two years I was working full time at my regular job just to try to pay all my bills and on my mm-hmm. days off I was substitute teaching so literally for two years I never really actually had a day off which was crazy yeah crazy and usually at the time um or even if I wasn't substitute teaching and I was actually off I would actually go to the school and still go for band class and still help with like uh like sectionals and stuff like that i was still doing all of that and being a track coach too at the same time i did that for two years oh wow (laughs) i was so busy for those two years well that's so it's so crazy well especially i know that there's a lot of teachers that had to have struggled because of everything with all this covid and i feel so bad for like especially that was the first thing when all this happened when like school was like trying to go back into sessions i was like how are they going to do band classes because they're spit everywhere. <laughs> yeah. At least for brass. I mean, definitely in woodwinds, but especially for brass, I was like, they're spit everywhere. And mm-hmm. of course, like you have to clean your horn so much and just, oh my, I felt so bad. And then I think I had seen like, you know, when college football was like starting to come back into play and all that stuff, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> but seeing like all the, <laughs> see I haven't changed much Sarah I haven't changed much but like seeing all of like the band like all the band members were so spread out and things like that and I'm just like that's not what a band looks like I feel so bad for them and oh my gosh I can only imagine what it's like I can only imagine anyway we can, we can start whatever you want to do we can do your thing hi Maddie <laughs> hi <laughs> it's good How to you see you Maddie? pretend like we haven't talked for like 30 minutes it's fine <laughs> <laughs> i'm doing good how are you i'm good <laughs> good uh, again it's i'm gonna say it again it's magical to see you after like forever of not seeing I know. you though i know oh, 
it's i mean we're and we're gonna have to like do another catch-up session way later because this needs to happen again so yeah anyway so yeah. that's why i like the I, podcast because it's like it gives me an excuse to actually like have a social life you know <laughs> <laughs> girl maybe that's what i need to do because dude literally, you'd be I'm- so good at it like <laughs> do you Actually, do you want to know how many people have said that to me? So many people have said, they're like, I've gotten that, that same comment. They're like, you have a radio voice. A lot of people have told me yeah. that. And I'm just like, hmm, interesting. So it's very tempting. So, but you this should. is exciting. I was like thrilled when I saw that you were doing a podcast and I was like, oh, my God. I was so proud of you. It's so weird, though, because, like, I have to record my classes and, like, upload them. And so, like, I'll be <clears> listening <throat> to that back, and I'm like, why do I talk like that? And it's, like, a completely different person when I'm teaching. I'm like, what is going on? Like, I, I, you know, uh, I have a podcast, and you t- I, I edit videos of myself all the time. And so, but when I hear that back, I'm like, who is that? <laughs> not me. I, oh, Girl, I know, because some people have said, like, Josh, he says the same thing. He goes, your hospitality voice is coming out, Maddie. I'm like, <laughs> oops. So, I understand. My teacher voice. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, well, I mean, I still was kind of, like, teaching, quote, unquote, I guess you would say, for two summers, because I was in charge of a kid's camp here you know in hospitality and so so I was actually teaching like survival skills almost like teaching almost like a scout kind of camp so I was teaching like a lot of nature and survival skills and stuff like that so I was technically teaching for two summers Mm -hmm. uh so and this past summer I actually started in a new role so I'm not I wasn't involved with the kids camp anymore so I was still kind of teaching so yeah every now and then my whole my teaching voice when I was like substitute teaching a lot would come out and I'm just like Oh, I kind of like it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm still fun, but don't mess with me. You know, that kind of, yeah, My I get it. It's just like awkward. I'm just like, okay, guys, so <laughs> this is what we're going to, I'm like, can't you just speak normally? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> no i i totally understand i i totally get it so because it's just like you still want to be very professional but it's also you still want to be like laid back and you still want to be relatable to the kids and everything yeah. but it's just like the you create like a whole new person it's like i don't even know who that person is she's gross <laughs> i completely understand i know so it's weird <laughs> anyway, yeah, Maddie, do you want to kind of give like a brief introduction of you and everything? Oh well, um, I'm Maddie. Uh, so Sarah and I met in college when she when she came into college. I did a little concord into the music program. Uh, so today, <laughs> wearing the band shirt. <laughs> All of my con or all of like my seven Concord shirts are like dirty right now because I wear them constantly because they're like so worn and so comfortable. So I decided to wear my Mozart shirt that I got in Austria that's with Ina Klein and Knock Music on it. Oh, that's so. hey, we can talk about that later. <gasps> Love that trip, and I cannot wait to tell you about it. It was so okay. good. Okay, so uh, <laughs> but yes, so I got my degree. Um, at Concord in music, mostly uh, in performance. And I got some communication in there as well. Um, But I uh, am actually planning on hoping by the spring, I'll be going online to get my music degree uh, in education. So hopefully I can be able to teach. So right now I'm just trying to find a school that's going to accept me with all of my transcripts because I've taken a huge gap in time off Um, But I did like the after like the two years after I graduated in 2014, uh, I did a lot of different auditions, which I am, I would love to tell you about the different auditions that I did. Some were in person, some, some, (laughs) some, some some virtually that I did. It was crazy. Some of the audition processes that I did and very expensive. So I did a lot of that. And then of course, a lot of substitute teaching that I did in the music industry. 
Um, and I'm a part of a local jazz orchestra that's here in Lewisburg, uh, West Virginia. Uh, and of course, they're not having a concert this year, which, you know, that's, that's typical. They're not having it. As far as I know, they're not having it unless something's changed. But um, so I'm still involved with music a little bit, not as much as I used to be. But um, hopefully that's going to change here in the next year. So very excited. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of things are are starting to kind of fall back into into place after basically taking like four years of not really being involved in music at all. So, which is sad, but I mean, hey, life happens, and you got to take control of that first. So, you yeah. got to do what you got to do. I'm in there so. right now, so. <laughs> <I was> like... <laughs> <laughs> and I and I plus I just again like we were talking about earlier I just feel for everybody who is actually in music education right now trying to teach I feel so bad for them just because it's like they're not especially kids that are like just getting into band classes they're like want to be a part of band or like they're trying to just learn like what if you're going into sixth grade and you want to actually be a part of band it's not going to be the same experience like what you and I had starting yeah. out you know and I, I, it's just I feel so bad for or any any kid that's going into school this is not the same normal school that they always heard about or, or was, was always been a part of you know so it's I feel for everybody that's in the education system right now my assistant principal was talking about that she's like this changes like snow days and everything because it's like even if you get a snow day like you could theoretically still get an assignment yeah, because everything is virtual, so you yeah. st- technically still can't miss class because everything's virtual. I mean, I'm not so. planning on working on a snow day, but like, <laughs> I-, I want my snow days. <laughs> exactly. I will lounge around in my sweatpants and drink hot chocolate and watch Christmas movies all day. <laughs> so, yeah, I want my snow days. I totally understand. <laughs> but, you know, if you're in the system. You're in the system. Yeah. I know. So, so like I'm excited. I know I'm. I'm happy you're on. Like <laughs> I was like I was like brainstorming people, and I was like Maddie. <laughs> oh, Maddie, love it, love it. Okay, what you got for me, girl? Uh, okay, so like, why'd you pick trombone? Okay, so here's a funny story about the trombone. So my major instrument, I didn't mention that in my little introduction. My major instrument is trombone. I picked that up in sixth grade. Uh, When they came to elementary school in fifth grade and they were like, oh, you know, here's all the instruments and everything to pick. Of course, you see the trombone and you're just like, oh, I don't have to work my fingers. Right? I mean, you see it and you're just like, oh, I don't have to worry about like, you know, moving my fingers and have to worry about messing up. It has to be the easiest instrument. And so picked it up, played it. And it took me a second to kind of get the buzz down. But once I did, I was like, yeah, I like this instrument a lot. But I found out quick, fast, and in a hurry that trombone is one of the most difficult instruments ever. It's so hard uh, because it's just a giant tuning slide. But I mean, once I got into it, I absolutely fell in love with it because it's just quirky. It's different. It represents me in so many different ways. So (laughs) I just felt I just fell in love with it. The more and of course, at first, I was like, I told my mom, and I love telling this part of the story. I told my mom was like, um, I don't want to do this now. And it was the day that I had to turn in the check to get my student instrument. And she goes, I wrote the check, you're doing it. (laughs) So pretty much I have to give a huge shout out to my mom. Because she was like, the one that was like, No, you're doing it. And then of course, she's like, you're doing it all the way through high school. And then, of course, when I was like, oh, I'm actually going to major in it in in college. So that was just like, it just blossomed from there. Just a huge love for the trombone. It was just, it's such an amazing instrument. Just so much you can do with it. And it's amazing. I love it. I have four of my horns here with me now, actually. (laughs) You have four? I actually, I still have my original, my original trombone that I got in sixth grade. I still have that one. Then I have my first uh, F attachment horn that has the trigger on it. I got that in high school. I was actually renting that one for a while. Then we full on bought it. 
then um, I actually have a pea bone, a plastic trombone, and it's green, my favorite color. Uh, I got that one for my like 22nd birthday, I think. Um, and then I have my box strad horn that I got my senior year there in at Concord. Um, I have that. And then I actually, one of the members at my job that I work at, he read my little biography that I was a music major and trombone was my instrument. And he gave me his trombone from like the 1960s or whatever, like a student horn. And it sounds amazing, has a couple little dents in it, but it's, it's in great shape. So I have... Yeah, they're, ah, I know my, my collection is growing, honey, so I'm very excited, but the P-Bone, it's amazing, it, the sound quality in it is so good, I'm such a loser, it's fine, whatever. It's totally fine. <laughs> I, I'm in, I'm in good company to be a loser, so it's, it's fine, I'll, and I love it. Yes. <laughs> so, you mentioned that you're in, like, community band? orchestra there yes it's a uh the west virginia jazz orchestra is it's based out of lewisburg um and it's at the um one of the theaters that's here in lewisburg and i've been a part of that group since actually veterans day because they're they're used we used to have a veterans day concert all the time and then Mm -hmm. unfortunately just the the showing for it just started to dwindle a little bit. So unfortunately we had to cut the, we had to cut that performance. Um, excuse me. But um, actually I, I joined that group in 2015 and I've been a part of that group ever since. Um, I was always third trombone and then they promoted me to bass trombone, which was super awesome. And I always, just to put a pin in that, I always thought that it's like you were, you had to be, the first chair in your horn or first chair in whatever instrument you were, or you're nothing. And then I went to a, um, a small college band conference when I was in college and I was fourth trombone right above the bass trombone. I fell in love with the lower parts. I fell in love with like the third and fourth trombone parts. And so I was very excited when they were just like, we're going to put you on the bass bone part. And I instantly fell in love with it. I have to belt out all these like just pedal B flats and all that stuff. And I'm like, thank God I have the lung capacity for all of this. So it's, it's so much fun. Uh, it's, it's a, I mean, it's, and it's such a great learning environment too. Cause actually a lot of the, um, a lot of the people that are in that group are actually local teachers and just amateur players. Um, <clears throat> there's actually like a trumpet player who his main focus is being a, a dentist, but he is still, he's a trumpet player and he's really good. He just plays it for fun. So there's several members of the group that are there. They just play it for fun. They're just, they, that's music is not their major thing or whatever. They just play for the heck of it. So, but that's like the major group that I'm a part of. And then every now and then I'll get calls from some of the members of those groups to do like little church gigs and stuff like that. But that's the main group that I've been a part of here in the last few years. So, and it's an awesome environment. Actually, if you go to their website, there's several video clips of, of us, recent ones um, that kind of show you, um, kind of just give you an excerpt of things that we've played in Christmas concerts and stuff. Usually Christmas concerts are like the main hub of when we get everybody where it's sold out and it's so much fun usually they're about two hours long the concerts so oh yeah let's just say my chops are dead by the end because we're just like blasting and just having so much fun but it's a great time i forgot you were living in lewisburg right now well white sulfur is actually where i'm at so so i'm not too far i came up to lewisburg like a few weeks ago and I was girl, like, why didn't you? Oh, oops. What girl? <laughs> why didn't you call me? I don't know. I was a, like, uh, huh. But uh, girl, why didn't you tell me? Oh, no, I forgot. I was like, <laughs> wait. <laughs> you said Lewisburg, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm actually in spitting distance of the hotel, so I'm here in downtown White Sulphur. But I mean, I'm so close to to lewisburg so i can always skip over there if i need to but we came up uh, to like the fair like <clears throat> they had like some of the vendors there like the food vendors for like oh mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's why yep. we were up there and we stayed the night well, and I was just like, 
<laughs> well, girl, hello. You, you missed out. Hello. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, I oh know. no, Jenny. So, Jenny, you can hear her, I'm sure. Oh, never mind. She'll probably you'll probably hear her every now and then because she's not she doing attention to be right on now. The podcast. <laughs> She'll hop up here again. I'm sure, definitely. How would you say that your orchestra situation is different from like college band? Oh my gosh! Well, obviously you're not getting graded, obviously, but I mean, you're learning on such a different level and mm-hmm. such and in such in such a different way it's probably the best way that I should say that because it's like everyone chips in and teaches you new things because everyone in that everyone in that uh in that orchestra is just is comes from so many different backgrounds and they've they've learned from so many different people and they've come from different schools and whatnot and so we're all learning and I think that's and that's so true in any kind of aspect of life that you're still learning so it's like something that I may have learned in college somebody else had no clue you know or you know they didn't realize that you could do this or do that but the the jazz band actually improved on my jazz skills because I was probably out of all the genres I was weakest in jazz I was Mm -hmm. the weakest and I was you know and I I just wanted to be a part of a group just so I could play yeah and just and just to keep playing and so I was very nervous about joining that group because again my my skills in jazz were just like my improv skills are very weak and so and I'm I'm totally okay with admitting that, but they have made me so much more confident in my jazz skills and just like not thinking about it as much. And I think that's what like the, like the, the best part of jazz is, is that I guess, cause you're just classically trained, like how you and I are, we're so classically trained. It's like you read what you read the ink on the paper and that's it. You don't stray away from it. Yeah. But even in jazz, even in college, there was like a lot of it was still read the ink. There's a, not a lot of like, at least when I had the jazz ensemble, it wasn't, there's some improv a little bit. And then, you know, you were assigned to like kind of write an improv bit or whatever, just like, a, you know, just like a little 12 bar, you know, bit or whatever. But here it's just like, it made me feel so much more comfortable as a, you know, cause when you think of jazz, one of the main horns you think of is trombone, obviously, you know, trumpet and trombone. That's like two of the main instruments in my mind that I think of when it comes to jazz. And I was very nervous and about doing that. But when I started to play with these people and how comfortable they made me feel about it, and they're just like, it's okay to screw up and it's okay to, you know, even if you play the wrong note, play it with confidence and stuff like that. And that's a, a big thing that I'll always take to heart in, in playing music. Even if you play it wrong and you play it with confidence, at least I know that you can play it at the right, you know. But I, I love being a part of that group. It's just they're so welcoming. They're so willing to teach you. And it's just a great environment. It's a super great environment. Just all locals and just there mostly just to have a good time. That's the main thing. They're just there to have a good time. And it's just, it's an awesome group. Love being a part of it. That sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, just like, again, I can send you a link to our little website or whatever, and you can watch some of our Christmas gigs and stuff like that. And you can just see how much we have a great time with it. It's, it's so much fun. So I and mean, we, we just have nothing but laughs and we have a great, it's very, it's still, it's, it has that perfect balance of being professional yet very laid back where we, mm-hmm. we communicate with the crowd and, you know, that type of stuff. But man, we really know how to, we really know how to put out some music and it's so awesome. I love it. Well, and plus, when I was in high school, I was actually a part of a community, a, a legit orchestra, like with strings and stuff like that for two years, my junior and senior year, and the Allegheny Highlands Community Orchestra. And that was my first time ever playing with strings. Yeah. And then, and it was, that was a blast. 
to do that for two years. And I felt awful when I left for college. I was like, but I miss my people. And I was like one of the youngest people a part of that group. So, but it was because it's all older, you know, older musicians, ex-teachers and stuff like that, that play just like with this orchestra group, the jazz orchestra. But it was, it was so much fun. Just being a part of like local groups like that, local community bands and stuff like that is so much fun. They're a hoot to be around. (laughs) I'm making you miss it. (laughs) I was actually half tempted because Tom, Tom Hilliker, He's a part of a community band. I'm pretty sure that's there, like, in Withville, I think. Yeah. It's right near him or whatever. I was tempted. I was this close. I was like, do I want to drive two hours once a week to do this? <laughs> I was so tempted to do it. Oh, my gosh. I was so tempted. Just to keep playing. Oh, I was so tempted. but I probably yeah, I should. Like, How big is the group? Warm. I don't even know. But, like, last year when I was, like, in the music teaching one of like the band teachers at the other school was like hey you know we could use some drummers at the, our community band and i was like <gasps> but, oh you should have so, yeah i may like message her and be like are y'all even like practicing right now because yeah oh my gosh you should do it it's awesome is this i wonder like have you like heard any of their music or any of that stuff like any of their concerts or anything like that actually yeah they have like a festival around here on the fourth of july and i'm pretty sure they played at it last year and it was like it's really fun <gasps> so oh, oh then you should do it I you might. should I look might. into it i know i wonder that's another thing too is that i wonder like all these community bands and stuff like that who like i wonder how they're like tackling all of that i wonder i don't know hmm It's all craziness. It is crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. I I love that monkey. (laughs) Love your monkey. It was getting really warm. I was just like, he's got to (laughs) go. Oh my gosh. It's funny. Oh my god. Aww. I love, I always remember since we're talking about like, well, we're not, but it's an animal. You always talked about Boo all the time. I still remember your cat's name. <laughs> She's still here. Because <laughs> of her little. Her, after we're done recording. Uh, but, uh, her little, her little, oh, it, it was on her mouth, right? There was a patch mm-hmm. of fur that looked like her mouth was always open. <laughs> See, I remember. I remember all of those little things. Because you were just obsessed with her all the time. You always talked about Boo. She's cute. <laughs> yes. Back okay. to music. Too much coffee, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, main reason I started this podcast, or what inspired me to start this podcast, was because I took Skype lessons my fifth year of college. And so, now, everybody's taking virtual lessons. So, I was like, hmm it'd be interesting to share stories. So <coughs> you mentioned how you did virtual auditions before. So mm-hmm. kind of talk about that process. It was, that was the first time that I had done anything virtual with, with music at all. So the, it was two separate auditions that I had to do. And they were actually cruise line auditions is what they were. Um, and the one, there were actually very very similar on how they um on how they and how they did it so basically i was prepared like a zoom meeting the top half of me was all like professional everything was nice yada 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 bottom half of me it was a nightmare with sweatpants (laughs) and everything (laughs) so um basically it was like a questionnaire at the beginning of it and i'm sure it's way different now because again that was like four years ago but it was like a questionnaire and I had to record everything that I needed for um, like, they gave you a question. You had to hit record whenever you're ready to give your answer. Yada, 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 yada. Then you did that part. And then they sent you the little like transcripts basically of the pieces that you needed to play. And then they sent you an audio, the audio clip to go with that transcript piece of music and you had to record yourself playing it and then send it in. 
Um, and of course you had to send it in with like, um, a link to your YouTube channel or whatever. They didn't have it sent in any other, there wasn't another way that you could send it in. Um, but they, that's how you had to do it. And so I was practicing so much for those things and they were not the easiest little transcripts. They were pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, so both of those were the same with that. And then I actually had to do a small virtual part of an audition when I actually auditioned for the San Diego Symphony, which was, even if I knew there was like, and that's a terrible mindset to go into, but I was like, it's going to be a very rough, I mean, it's going to be a low odds for me to even get it. But I still want to do it simply for the fact that I wanted the experience of doing it even. <clears throat> so I wanted to do it the majority of it was in person, but you still needed to send in like something of you anyway. Um, it didn't matter like what it was. They still, you still needed to send something in of you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they sent the, um, the request if I wanted to actually go out to California and audition there at the San Diego symphony orchestra theater on their stage um, that, that was a heck of an experience, but, um, but the virtual for the two cruise lines I did, that was something that was very different. Just the interview process. It wasn't really an interview, but I mean, I made it to like, there's like different preliminaries and I made it to the next to the last one before they eliminated me. Um, but it was still an awesome experience to do it just cause it's not your traditional way of auditioning for, yeah. you know, a group or anything like that. So it was very different, but I mean, it was super cool though. So did you just like record it on your phone? I actually um, have a, a recorder that I actually bought specifically for recording for music. Um, okay. It's actually right over there on my desk and I can grab it here in a minute, but um, <clears throat> it almost looks like a handheld camcorder. It's really small. Um, but I have, I have that and, but, um, I actually recorded with my phone at the time too, just to kind of like as extra audio, that type of thing, just to have it just in case of like something messed up on that or, you know, whatever. Cause I always wanted a backup. Um, but it's actually a little camcorder that I actually bought, um, and used for that. Cause it has like a giant microphone right on the front of it. It's, it's probably like this big around right on the front. So it can pick up everything. And let me tell you, it picks up every single detail. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it picks up everything. So it was, I mean, it was a really nice, really nice investment on, on doing that. And plus, I mean, for musicians, that's what a lot of us was always taught is to record yourself and listen yeah. back to everything. That was a big thing. So, I mean, obviously, I mean, I did that some in, in college not really more towards the end. If I did not really towards the, the beginning, but I recorded myself some mostly just on my phone or whatever at the time or on my little iPod or whatever. But I mean, it's, it's an awesome, I don't even remember what it's called, but it's, it's over there. I'll have to grab it and, and see what the scoop is. I haven't pulled that baby out in a while. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you know what it is the audio interface for my lessons and it's just like i'm using it now so it's just <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's just like they come back around you know <laughs> yeah exactly i know i need to bust that out and get back into my practicing and stuff like that because it's it's been a while so i need to get back into my practicing again and kind of go cast <laughs> oh girl <laughs> it'll be a hot mess it'll pretty much just be like talking about nonsense which that's right up my alley because I'm usually going at like I'm usually going at like 12 different subjects and I love know. listening to podcasts like that though like they're my <gasps> favorite I'm gonna give you some suggestions at the end of this because there's okay. some like okay. some some of my like I, there's some drag queens that have a podcast oh my god oh, I love it so much <laughs> And then some of my favorite comedians have podcasts. And I love listening to them. It's so good. And they crack me up. So I'll give you those at the end. Remind me. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you can hear Jenny. She's not getting her attention. She's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. 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 
<laughs> she's, she's, you'll get your attention in a minute. She back talks me a lot and I don't appreciate it. Anyway, we were saying. Let's talk about your Austria trip. <gasps> oh my God. So that was actually when I was in school there at Concord. And I think, was this, what year was that? Was that 2012? I think it was 2012, the summer. It was uh, actually our Sound of Music trip. So we were there in Germany and Austria for 10 days. Um, Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Of course, we actually took a legit Sound of Music tour. And when we actually went to Salzburg, literally in my favorite town ever, favorite European town ever. It was so good. It's so, so small, easy to navigate. Plus the food is amazing. Um, But our music playing all the time every excuse me everywhere just the atmosphere is awesome um and of course you know we saw um i mean vienna was also amazing too because that was like the hub of music back in the day you know Mm -hmm. i mean that was just like oh it was so good and then of course you know we saw you know mozart's birth house and the and the church that he actually got all of his music started in and there's actually if I'm not mistaken if it was in Salzburg in in his church <clears throat> I cannot remember the name of his that cathedral for the life of me right now but I want to say it was the American Boys Choir that was actually performing I'm pretty sure it was in Salzburg and they were actually performing while we were there and we went in and we actually listened to them for a little bit. And plus the organs and all of those cathedrals over there, mind blowing how big they are and how intricate and how nice they are. Oh my gosh. And so, and I actually regrettably, well, I couldn't help it. I actually got sick when I was over there and I missed out on listening to the Vienna Philharmonic play because, and I had to leave because I got sick right before they started oh and I it's so I feel so like guilty that I got sick and just couldn't muscle through it but I I had to leave so and it was the worst thing ever but it was an awesome experience being over there and just being a part of like on a like actually going to parts of the film sets for the sound of music and just like I walked where Julie Andrews walked oh my gosh and then and then it dawned on me that I didn't realize that The Sound of Music was actually based on a real, real events. I had no clue that it was actually a real story. I had no clue. But <clears throat> so actually seeing like the actual like um, church and everything that the real Maria was at and like where she, you know, was raised and where she was a nun and stuff like that. It was an awesome experience and just just taking in the culture of like everything there in Austria and Germany and just like all of the music and there's people playing music everywhere. And just like, Oh, it just takes you back in time being over there in, in Europe. It's so good. So good. I want to go back so bad. <laughs> I do. I'd like to go. Oh, you would love it. Oh, you would love it. Just, it's, everyone is so nice. And again, the food is amazing. And, and here's another thing too, that I found really fascinating when, before I got sick and had to leave the, the, um, the opera house is that there's actually sections of the opera house where it's actually, it's not the entire opera house is not seating. There's actually sections of it in the very back that's actually standing only. And that's where we were. So it's actually no seats. It's like, I don't, I think there was like three or four different levels of the, of the opera house. And we were actually in the standing sections in the very, like if you Googled it and you actually saw the back of the theater, the back of the orchestra, it's all standing back there. I thought that to be very, very interesting. And also we were the dressiest people in that whole opera house. Everyone else was arriving like t-shirts and jeans and stuff. I'm like, you are disgracing. 
in the music industry right now. Why are you not dressed up for this? Like the whole group, when we went there, we had on like, you know, dresses and button down shirts and stuff like that. And there's people showing up in like t-shirts and jeans and track suits and stuff like that. I'm like, Mozart would have your head for this. You have no respect. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it was, uh, but it was still such an amazing experience just being in that opera house and how big it was and how everyone was there for a whole common thing was just to listen to this. And I actually think they were doing a Mozart um, set that night. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. But, and then actually the tickets for it were not that expensive either. They're relatively cheap, which I was very surprised, but it wasn't that bad to get in there. Plus, I mean, even though you were paying for the standing sections of the opera house, it still was not bad at all for the price of it. So I can't, I think it was like between 20 and 30 euros maybe. So that's like, that's pretty cheap. Yeah. So, like, I went to see the National Symphony a few years ago in D.C., and it was, like, $25 for the seats that I got, $25, $30 for my seat, and I had a heck of a seat, and I was expecting it to be, like, a hundred and something dollars. Right. No. So, I know. (laughs) I know. So, it was awesome. So, I would love to go back again and I mean, we had so many amazing different tours and stuff like that when we were over there. And it was just, oh, it was awesome. Just the vibe over there was so amazing. So positive. Everyone was just happy all the time over there. It was great. It was great. <laughs> Your face was like, aw. <laughs> well, like, compared to, like, everything now, it's just like everybody's so mad all the time (laughs) yeah everybody over there was just so so happy and so positive and they were just they were happy with everything they were doing like the people working in the pastry shops over there they were just loving what they were doing they were happy to see us they they love tourists they do and they were I mean they were all about the tourists and like especially when they could tell that you were like wanting to know everything that they were doing and you were asking questions they were all about telling you it was it was so much fun it was so great and all the you know the tour guides that we had like the tour the two tour guides that we had for the sound of music the sound of music tour that we had they were the best they were Mm -hmm. awesome and they had a lot of knowledge about the film they had a lot of knowledge about Every, like everything that you would need to know for it and it was it was so good it was so good nice. <laughs> <laughs> i know i would love to go back over again just to like kind of do it on my own schedule you know cuz i mean even though we were with the group and everything like that and it was still awesome it was still loads of fun and we went to several of the <clears throat> uh it was in vienna still we actually went to a museum a music museum that had like all the different instruments and stuff. It had like a section for percussion, a section for brass, a section for woodwinds. And it actually had like the original trombone, which was called the sack butt that everyone loves to make fun of me for. But um, they had like some of the original ones and like the original horns, like French horns. Cause you know, we went with Z and um course she was all about all of that she loved that so I mean it was it was awesome just like how they still I think that's another thing that I love about that is that even though like they still preserve so much and they like they take their history seriously and they want to preserve it so much over there so like everything like because Vienna was like again the music hub for you know for ages over there and they preserved all of that and it was so good like seeing like the suits that some of like these famous composers wore they had those there and like um i want to say oh lord Uh, oh lord oh gosh i can't think of his name right off the top of my head wagner yeah i think it was wagner they had his batons 
like the different batons that he used. I'm pretty sure it was him. And I mean, they had like all these different collections, like original, uh, original scores with like edit marks on it from these different composers. They had all of this stuff in this museum. It was amazing just to be within inches of it. Just like, oh, he touched that, you know, it was, it, it was just so cool to be a part of all that and to see it and just to be up close to it. It was awesome. Yeah. I, I believe it. <laughs> Extra, even though they're dead, but it's, it's amazing. <laughs> and that is it for the first part of the episode. I hope you enjoyed. And stay tuned for part two with Maddie. This has been Teach Talk with the Fine Arts. Mm-hmm.